Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. One of our lovely viewers recently suggested that we work on a winter scene in preparation for the coming cold weather and Christmas. That's a really nice contrast to last week's beachy scene, so thanks Diane, this one's for you. First off I want to say a few things about colour palettes. So colour theory is obviously a massive subject, but today I'm just going to show you one quick and easy way to plan your colours at the beginning of a project. If you type colour palettes into Google, you'll get a huge list of websites offering all sorts of resources when it comes to colour picking. Here today, I've just clicked on the first one that popped up. I've narrowed down my search term using the word winter, and I'm just having a look through to see which one I like the look of. When you click through, the website will give you the hex values for the, all the colours, and you could copy and paste these into Illustrator, but I find the quickest and easiest way to get them is just to take a screenshot of the whole palette and then drag it into my project. Now in the swatches panel, if you see this little folder here, I'm going to click on that which will let me create a new colour group and I can name it what I like. Let's call it Winter Scene. So with my colour dropper tool, I'm going to click on each colour in turn and then drag that swatch into my newly created folder until I have a new set of colours, and they're all organised and ready for me to work on. I probably won't stick to just these ones, but it gives me a good base to start with. So let's get going with our scene. I'm going to start my picture with a gradient, but this time I'm going to make my own. I touched on gradients in the last tutorial, so if you'd like a refresher I'll put the link for that video up at the top of the screen. Today I'm going to use two of the colours that I just put in my colour group and I'm going to drag them down into the gradient slider. I need to delete any colours that were already there from the last gradient I used, but I'm going to end up with these two blue colours. Now we'll create some faint clouds using the pencil tool. The pencil tool is used for drawing freestyle shapes and it's probably the digital tool that mostly resembles traditional sketching especially if you have a, a pen and tablet. I've set mine up so that when I get close to the starting point of the shape that I'm drawing, the line will close and the shape will be filled with my fill colour. You can alter the fidelity depending on how much you want the software to smooth out your lines, so I've kept it quite smooth here. So once we're done with the clouds, I'm going to add a hazy sun. I'm trying to get the effect here of a cold winter's afternoon, so I'm just drawing a circle and then I'm going to make it look a little bit hazy by using an effect. In the menu I've used effect, SVG filter, Gaussian blur. So I've decided I want this to be a city scene. So I'm going to create the suggestion of buildings in the background and all I'm doing is playing around with various shapes in a slightly darker colour than the sky. In the last video I showed you how to lock the bits that you're not working on so that you don't interfere with them when you draw on top, and today I'm going to show you an alternative way to do that. So my sky and buildings are all on a layer together, and I'm totally finished with them now and I know that everything else I'm going to add will be in front of them. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to lock the whole of the bottom layer so that nothing on it can be selected until I unlock it again. In the middle distance I'm going to draw some vague outlines of bushes. You can create a sense of depth by using less detail on the objects that are further away, so I'm going to keep them quite simple. I'm doing this with a pencil tool again. I'm also going to draw a white rectangle and warp the edges a little bit to suggest snowy ground. When I'm done with all these bits I'm going to create a new layer and lock that one. So now we're going to work on the foreground, and the first element I want to add at the front of the scene is a tree. 
If you want to know how to make a blobby tree like this, have a look at my previous video. I'll put a link up on the screen. So I'm drawing the trunk with the pencil tool again, and I'm going to make it a lot sparser than our leafy summer tree. Next up is a very simple park bench. It's just made from four horizontal and two vertical rectangles. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new tool or a new set of tools. These are the envelope distorts, which sounds a bit weird, but they're really useful. Um, you can find them in the menu under object, envelope, distort, make with warp. So imagine you've drawn your object and now you're taking your object and you're putting it inside an envelope of a different shape. The thing inside will be squashed or pulled depending on the shape of the envelope. Illustrator is full of distortion tools which can be super useful once you get the hang of them. In fact I'm planning on a deep dive series where I go into a lot more detail about each tool. If that's something you think that would be useful please just let me know and if there's a particular tool that you're struggling with I'd love to help you out. Let me know in the comments. So I'm using the shell shape to make the bottom part of this lamp appear a little bit 3D. And I'm also going to do the same with the top part, but in the opposite direction. The lamp part at the top I filled with a gradient to make it look sort of glowy and orange, and I've thickened the black stroke around it to make it look like the metal frame. We're getting to the end now, I just want to add a few more elements. I'm making a curved path using the envelope distort on a rectangle and I'm adding just a few more shadows and some reflections with the pencil tool. Then I'm shifting and resizing the elements until I'm happy with my composition. Okay, just one more layer and I'm going to make it snow. And there we have it, a snowy park in winter. Oh, that's just rude. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.